Hello everybody, I am Balji Dhaka from Pinnacle Coaching Center and today <coughs> we will discuss a very very important chapter that is related to the economics. As you know there are various parts of economics and today we will do microeconomics chapter. Microeconomics total 5 to 6 questions only come in SSC CGL exam. You watch one of my presentation where the syllabus is defined. What kind of questions are asked in SSC CGL exam? Everything is given in that presentation. Every last three years questions are analyzed in such a way that you will be able to understand how to study economics. And in from that perspective, today we are we will discuss microeconomics and the chapter is demand. You can say and you will find in the last three years observation that the highest number of questions are asked from one chapter that is demand. So if you must be clear or you can say this is the first chapter of microeconomics you can also say that highly significant chapter and let us see this chapter we will study in maybe in two three three four presentation it will require three presentation to understand in details because question are in economics are asked in full detail so you cannot make shortcut you have to con uh, clear your concept in detail now now understand what is demand everywhere in the market you will find that this uh, things has very high demand this thing has very this good has very less demand so what is the demand actually from the economic perspective the de demand for a commodity refer to what is commodity commodity means thing good is commodity refer to the quantity of the commodity which an individual person is willing to buy at particular price at a particular spec at a specific time at a specific time this is also important and particular price in the given price and at the given time if a person is ready to buy then we will call it a demand of that particular commodity but at that time if he is not ready to buy but he will buy in the future we cannot say that demand is there in the market demand is made up of desireness to buy willingness to pay this is important desireness to buy you must have the interest to buy willingness to pay it and ability to pay its price this is also important he is interested everybody everybody is interested in ac air condition but is it it is it is it 100 percent sure that everybody can pay the price that is not sure everybody has a desire for air condition everybody has willingness maybe he is ready if he has money but he does not have money it means the demand the component are not fulfilling you can say you cannot say the demand is there demand for demand everything has to be satisfied that is ability to pay should be also there this is called individual demand De demand of an individual and you must be you can co conclude also from the above two three statement that demand is a function of price what does it mean demand is dependent on price do you agree i hope you will be agree because if the AC air condition price is for example now 35,000 around something around 35,000 if AC price is 5,000 it is possible that many people who are not able to pay will be ready to buy that product it means in 5,000 demand can be much much higher as compared to when the demand is for 35,000 or you can say cold demand in winter vacation or winter season is comparatively less as compared to summer vacation similarly for other item also so here but we are discussing the price factor we have taken ac as example and also 
ability to buy is applicable but here in this particular case we are taking example of only price function what is market demand then this is important to learn all the definition related to the demand market demand it is the sum of all the individual demand for a commodity in the market in a particular market all individual all individual sum of the there are many people who will be interested who has the ability to pay who will pay so total you mean sum of all individual demand we will call it market demand i think it is clear and management decision of a firm relating to production how much production that firm has to do cost allocation what how much cost the firm will allocate to a particular function pricing advertising bursting etc for an analysis of the market demand for its firm product so it is important for a firm to analyze the market demand if he if that firm want to sell its product because if the production cost is very high and customers are not ready to pay that price it means the decision has to be taken whether that, that particular thing commodity has to be produced or not similarly what is the impact of advertising depends on the market demand season also depend there are various factor which, which will depend on the market demand but firm has to take care of the market demand while deciding many functions now type of demand type of demand one is individual demand what is individual demand demand by a single customer i think it is very clear there is no need self explanatory demand by a single customer but what is market demand summation of all individual demand this is also clear because we have already discussed that industry demand what is industry demand total demand for a commodity produced by all the firms constituting that industry is called industry demand like demand for all car kind of cars demands of all kind of pens demand of all kind of a car or buses whatever you want to take example you can say in a particular industry the total sum of you can say sum of all commodity produced by all the firms this is important produced by all the firm it means industry demand and market demand there are two separate terms and differences there what is short term demand short term demand demand for goods over a short period of time like fashion goods seasonal goods short period of time you can take the example of mobile phones the market is changing very fast earlier we you have taken a mobile phone of 20000 6 months ago maybe the price has reduced now up to 10000 12000 or you can say uh, fashion style is also changing some seasonal goods for example radish watermelon these are seasonal goods and demand for that goods is for a particular period or duration or season what is long term long term demand refer to the demand which exist over a long period most general goods fmcg consumer durable have long term demand fmcg means for example sugar tea Uh, tea, and then uh, you can say the grocery items. All these have long-term demand. Atta, or long-term demand. You can say chocolate has also long-term demands. So for it is not specific to any season, but for a, all seasons. Autonomous demand. What is autonomous demand? Also called as direct demand. is one that is arising on its own out of a natural desire to purchase it is independent of the demand for any other commodity like demand for food cloth house so autonomous demand means demand with this demand is independent of other this is directly generated for example if you need a pen you need pen if you need clothes you need clothes it does not depend on other items so what is derived demand autonomous means self self generated demand and derived demand means it is derived from any other demands 
इट अरोज बिकॉज ऑफ द डिमांड फॉर सम अदर कम्युनिटी लाइक डिमांड फॉर हाउस इज ऑटोमोट नॉनस डिमांड डिमांड फॉर सीमेंट ब्रेक्स एंड आयरन ड्राइड फ्रॉम द कंस्ट्रक्शन नीड्स इफ हाउस इज रिक्वायर्ड दिस दिस कैन बी ऑटोनोमस डिमांड बट टू बिल्ड हाउस देन मोर हाउसेज विल बी सोल्ड पीपल विल परचेज बाय मोर हाउसेज इट मीन्स द ब्रिक्स सीमेंट आयरन द डिमांड ऑफ दीज आइटम विल ऑल्सो राइज डिमांड ऑफ वेजेस विल ऑल्सो राइज लेबर विल ऑल्सो राइज सो दीज आर ड्राई डिमांड बिकॉज दे आर डिपेंडेड ऑन डिमांड ऑफ अदर कॉमोडिटी डिमांड फॉर ड्यूरेबल गुड्स गुड्स हुज यूजफुलनेस इज नॉट एग्जॉस्टिड इन ए सिंगल यूज जस्ट लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू टेक सिगरेट इट कैन बी इट इज यूज इन ए सिंगल टाइम बट इफ यू टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ टीवी फ्रीज नाइफ किचन आइटम दे आर यूज ओवर ए लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम दीज आर ड्यूरेबल आइटम ड्यूरेबल मीन्स लॉन्जिविटी इज वेरी हाई दे कैन बी यूज रिबिल्डली लाइक टीवी क्लोथ शूज कार इलेक्ट्रिक गुड्स दीज आर ड्यूरेबल गुड्स डिमांड फॉर नॉन ड्यूरेबल गुड्स नॉन ड्यूरेबल गुड्स आर दोज विच कैन बी कंज्यूम ओनली वंस इन वेरी शॉर्ट टाइम ऑल फूड आइटम लाइक ड्रिंक्स कॉस्मेटिक फॉर इन दिस कैटेगरी दे आर पेरिशेबल मीन्स दे विल बी फिनिश्ड इफ विल नॉट बी यूज utility what is utility when you know the demand you must know the utility because is take a simple example do you think the quilt or blanket has utility in summer especially in north india in haryana punjab where the temperature is now temperature is above 45 degree do you think there is utility, uh, utility of quilt so it depends on the for example if a person is non vegetarian vegetarian do you think chicken beef or mutton or any other non veg item has utility for a non uh, vegetarian person obviously there is no utility for that non veg item so we have to understand the utility it will help to understand and make a relationship between demand and it will help to take the decision managerial decision of a firm because micro economics is all about related to the firm while macro economics is related to the overall economy overall economy of a country while micro economics related to micro means at ground level that is for related to the firm so it is the basis utility it is the basis for demand of a commodity by individual there can be product utility it satisfy the requirement of a consumer whether a particular product satisfy the requirement or not so this will be the product utility second is consumer utility this is psychological feeling of pleasure from its consumption to consumer it is post consumption phenomena after consumption he will feel satisfied he will feel pleasure consumer utility is in fact after consuming he will for example he has taken for example cigarette after consumption he will feel and it may be energetic or whatever you want to say consumer utility it is a subjective concept which depend totally on the consumer who consume it because product has utility to actual consumer only meat has no utility to vegetarian utility varies from time to time wooden have utility in winters but no utility utility in summers commodity need not have same utility for the same consumer at different times so this is the concept of consumer utility a person may have different utility of a particular commodity at different time a product has very good utility for for a but he will not be he is not utilized by the b so what is total utility then summation of utility derived by a consumer from the various unit of a good at a point or over a period of time you can say all benefit or all utility utility of a product 
real quality summation of utility you can say total utility a person is using quilt or blanket in all you can say five to five seven winter session this is total utility of that item for a particular that person what is marginal utility then it may be defined as the addition of an extra utility to the total utility resulting from the consumption of one additional unit what is marginal utility it may be defined as the margin margin is addition of extra utility to the total utility resulting from the consumption of additional unit this line or statement or paragraph is very very important you can say marginal utility the if a person has let's take an example a person has already taken five chapatis now he will have less utility utility or maybe zero utility for the sixth or you can say the marginality marginal utility for the another chapati can be very less so marginal utility after is that uh, extra utility you can say when an additional unit is consumed the utility derived from the last unit consumed can be measured by change in total utility it is proposed by alfred marshall so utility concept is related to alfred marshall this is very important law of diminishing this is also very very important statement uh, law law of diminishing utility marginal utility you can say also called this is gaussian first law we will also call it a gaussian first law proposed by herman hendrix in 1854 it states that marginal utility of a good diminishes as an individual consume more and more unit of a good after a period of time the marginal utility you will see for example you, you take the example of chapati also you can take the example of any other item initially the utility is quite high but as we take more and more item utility will slowly slowly go down so the rate will also increase of slowing down you can say it said the marginal utility of good diminishes as an individual consume more and more unit of a good so this is very very important statement extra utility or satisfaction that he derives from extra utility consume goes on falling extra satisfaction he for example a person is taking five chapati but he, he he want to eat more and he want to 6 7 8 8 never he go to a higher number the satisfaction level will go down extra utility will go down it is only the marginal utility that declines and the total utility that is increasing but at the decreasing rate this is also very very important the marginal this is total utility utility here the total utility the curve is like this how this is declining but at the decreasing rate but here the this increasing the trend is increasing but in here case this trend is decreasing this is the symbol of decreasing because this line below the line it will decrease marginal utility this is marginal utility curve and this is total utility curve these curve are important these are unit and these are utility utility will decrease here the utility will decrease and it can go in the into the negative slope and this law of diminishing marginal utility based on two facts as an individual consume more and more unit of good intensity of his want for goods all falling keep falling and point is reached where the individual no longer wants any more unit of good that is when saturated point is reached marginal utility of good becomes zero afterwards it cannot be negative it can be negative also so that which we have seen in the diagram which in seen the you can say in the graph that marginal utility utility after a certain period of period of time it will go into the negative zone second fact is that the difference different good are not perfect substitute for each other 
in the satisfaction of other particular wants. It is consumed for satisfaction of only one specific want. You can, you, uh, what does it mean? Different goods are not perfect substitute. This line is important. Coffee may not replace 100% to the tea. Or even jeans may not replace 100% to silver kameez. This is what you want to make, uh, convey the message. It is consumed for satisfaction of only of one specific want. Then money is an exception. Very important line here. Money is an exception. Marginal utility of money is never zero or negative. Since it can, can be put to various uses for satisfying different wants. It means marginal utility. Extra addition of money, the want cannot be decreasing or zero. What will always be there for money? So, the money is marginal utility of money cannot be negative or zero. Very important. Law of diminishing marginal utility is one important cause for the demand curve to slope downward. Or you can say this law is helpful to understand why the demand curve slope is downward. Because the additional satisfaction is decreasing. Condition where the law of diminishing marginal utility applies are where this condition, where this law can be applied, units of quantity should be consumed continuously in succession at one particular time. You can say all chapatis, you should take continuous basis. You, you cannot say today five taken chapati and then you will measure your extra utility tomorrow. No, on the same continuous succession. There should not be any change in the test, fashion, lifestyle, custom of the consumer. Mental stage should be the same. You can say the condition should be the same. All unit of community and their substitute should remain the same. You can say the conditions are here constant. In the under constant condition, or you can say in the under the given condition, law of diminishing marginal utility, utility will apply. What is then law of equal marginal? Uh, utility, law of equity, marginal utility and also no, uh, known as the law of substitution, law of maximum satisfaction, law and Gaussian second law. We have studied Gaussian first law in case of marginal utility. Now we are uh, studying the law of equity, marginal utility or you can say law of substitution, the law of maximum satisfi uh, satisfaction. Law of equally marginal utility explain the consumer equilibrium. A consumer has a given income which he has to spend on various goods he wants. This is very important line. Now, how will he allocate his money between various goods? What would be his equilibrium position in respect of the purchases of various goods? Law of equally mar marginal utility depends on the marginal utility of goods and the price of the goods. These two factors decide the buying behavior of a consumer. You can say a person has certain income and from that certain income he wants to buy various commodity. But he wants to maximize his uh, uh, optimal utilization of his money. You can say the marginal utility of goods and the price of that goods are highly dependent on each other. Suppose a, he has a marginal utility of a good, but the price of the good can be very high. So it has to be trade off. If the price is high, it means the marginal utility, a person has to cut down its utility because he is not able to purchase that item you can say he is not able to maximize his total satisfaction. There are two factors decide the buying behavior of consumer. You can say marginal utility of goods and price of the good, price of the goods. This goes same second law of the substitution states that consumer will spend his money on different goods in such a way that marginal utility of each good is proportional to its price. A person will you can say Purchase the commodity according to its utilization and the price. 
If price is more, he is likely to resist to purchase. If price is less, he is likely to purchase more. But he has to also see the utilization of that particular product. And what is cardinal utility? Cardinal utility. Classical economists like Karl Menzer, Jeremy Bentham, Leon Walras, this we, uh, we call it all these economists to neoclassical economists. You can say neo means the new generation related, you can also say like Alfred Marshall, believed that utility can be measured in quantitative figure. Here the cardinal utility, what these uh, economists are saying that utility can be measured in quantitative figures just as height and weight. It gives absolute figure of utility. Neoclassical economists coined the term util to measure the utility of any good consume, consumed, thus util as a unit of, uh, unit of utility. They assume that one util is equal to one unit of money and that utility of money remains constant. So there you can say the neoclassical thinkers of economists, they coined the term utility and thought and uh, 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 propose the theory that utility, utility can be measured and we will call it a cardinal, cardinal utility. While ordinary utility is modern economists like J.R. Hicks and R.J.D. Allen are of the view that utility cannot be measured in absolute figures. These are comparatively you can say the modern economists. How are the economics is itself a modern subject, but here the more young or you can say modern economists, they, they are, don't have, they do not agree with the cardinal utility thinkers. And what is their opinion? That utility cannot be measured in absolute figure. This is, that's why they are saying that this is ordinary utility. Cardinal means that can be measured, you can easily, you can write here only, cannot be measured, cannot be measured. Utility can be actually only ordinary. You can say it can be, cannot be measured, but it can be expressed in the order. For example, this, uh, this T is better than, more, uh, better, uh, more tasty, uh, tastier than uh, as compared to earlier T more bitter than earlier, more sweet, uh, uh, you can say, as compared to earlier. This is known as ordinal concept. Consumer may not be able to say that chocolate gives 8 util of satisfaction and cake gives 12 util of pleasure. But he or she can always tell whether chocolate gives more test, more or less utility than cake. This is the basis of ordinal theory of consumer behavior. So, this is the base. To understand this theory will help to understand the consumer behavior. Cardinal utility approach can be called as neoclassical approach. Ordinary utility approach of Hicks and Allen can be called as indifference curve analysis. Cardinalists used money as a measure of utility in absolute term. Now what is indifference curve analysis? And we will also this indifference curve analysis, indifference nerve and other terms related to demand and utility we will study in we will discuss in a next presentation of the demand chapter thank you very much for watching this presentation all the rest